Morning everyone. What I thought we'd do today is have a little look at rendering up designs from SketchUp. So if your SketchUp is quite new to you and you've not used it much before, I suggest watching the tutorial video I've done on the basics of SketchUp online. You don't need to download any software, you can just use the online browser-based SketchUp, um, which works really well, especially for simple models. But what we're going to do today is have a look at how we can render up our designs, put them into scenes, try and contextualize them a little bit more and, and add further detailing to them. So this is a model I've designed here. It's a very simple sort of building. I'm only going to be kind of superimposing one face of it into, into my scene. So I've really only paid any attention to this one side. Again, it's very simple. It's just got a bit of kind of what will be decking around the outside. Um, and then I've added a glass texture in here so you can see into the space. But when we go to export it, that kind of glass color and the colors are gonna be missing from it. So what we're gonna have a quick look at and something that isn't in the other video is adding styles to your designs in SketchUp. Um, and this is a really useful tool. So over here on the right hand side, we've got this styles editor panel. What it enables you to do is you can click on any of the styles and it applies these color palettes and things to them. Some are really awful, but some are really nice. So things like this photo modeling one is quite good because it can show you kind of interior spaces and it makes it look like quite nice technical drawings of your space. So it will show your kind of construction of it. So this is quite a nice thing to add into some of your pages. What we're going to be looking at is just the straight line section here. I'm just going to select one of these. That one's a bit thick. We get a nice thin line. Something like that work, works quite well. And again, it's a bit like your illustrator line drawings. The great thing about doing this in SketchUp is you can still edit your drawings at any stage. So it almost, I'm drawing three dimensionally but it's adding in all of those lines. So it's quite a nice, quick way of creating these outline forms. So I'm quite happy with that. All I've got to do now is save it as an image. You could either screenshot it, but you'll get quite a low resolution version of it. Alternatively, if you go up the top here, go to this save icon and go to export. What we want is it as a PNG file. So that's a kind of a two dimensional file that's editable for us in Photoshop, PNG. The dimensions of this 3,346 pixels by 1700. That's about right. I'm quite happy with that. We can still zoom in at any stage. So I'm gonna try and fill my canvas with it. So if that's saying 100 or 200, that's too small. But if it's saying it's 10,000, that's too big. You know, something around the 3000 mark is probably about right. You can, of course, adjust your view at any stage so you can look and see what the image is going to look like that you're exporting. So you can look at all these different aerial views, side views and things of your of your design. But I'm just going to position mine something like that. And I want to try and just get a nice straight bottom edge. So something like that, I think works quite well for the scene I'm going to put it into. I'm then going to go to export as PNG and it's now just downloaded into my downloads. Next thing I'd suggest you do is visit a website which is called unsplash.com. It's just up here. I only discovered it today, um, but it's brilliant. On here you can search for scenes and you can get really high resolution, good quality images which you can download for free. So it's a bit better I think there's a bit better quality of images and the scale of them is much better than what you typically find in on Google Images, for example. So I've just typed in landscape. I've actually selected this one. You might select the same, but have a look around, try and find something different maybe to superimpose your building into. Right, next we're going into Photoshop. So I brought my image in here. I've also got two other um, panels open. So these on these other windows, I've got these wood textures. So I've got this decking, um, these panels here, and this sort of decking texture here, which I'm going to be using on my model. Just 
bring that down so that's all in your view. Um, next, we're just going to go to File and Open. Going to go to my Downloads, um, and it should be just there. So it's the third one I brought in, and I'm going to open up my Illustrate, well, my Illustrator Effect Google SketchUp model. First thing I'm going to do is they automatically come in watermarked with the SketchUp logo. You can either just crop that out like that, which is absolutely fine. Um, alternatively, if it's you know interfering with your model or you need some of the detail at the side and you can't crop it out, you might use something like the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Right click or just at the top of your screen, adjust the size. You can paint over, paint over it. Okay, and hopefully it should just fill in with white around it. Right, next I just want to chop out my model and bring that in. Because I've got these quite nice closed paths, what I can hopefully do is, um, or maybe I can't, that I've got a little gap somewhere. Just going to zoom in nice and close and just chop around it. So I'm using the polygonal lasso tool. It's this tool at the top left hand corner. This enables me, like a pair of scissors, <clears throat> to snip things out. I'm not going to do it too accurately. If you make a mistake, just hit the backspace key. So I could really do with being zoomed in a little closer. But so you can see my whole screen, I won't. And I'm just going to again, just chop round it like this. Okay, so I've now got that nice selection area. All I've got to do is copy it, Command C, go across to my landscape and paste it in, Command V. So automatically, even from a sketch um, that you've done on a piece of paper or um, a model you've done in SketchUp, you could just paste it in and leave it something like that. I just want to position it. I'm going to crop out some of this detail behind and I want my building to feel like it's floating over the water. So just the positioning of it's really important and it's really important you get you take the shot of your image and you you know what landscape you're putting it into first. So you're getting things at the right perspective. For me this is about right. That feels like it's sitting in there quite nicely. I've got some details in the landscape. I've got these reflections, things which I'll get rid of shortly. But I think some sort of positioning like that is quite good. It feels like it's it's sitting there. It doesn't feel like it's floating overly. And what we will be doing through the tutorial is looking at some things which can help ground it, make it really feel like it's sitting within that environment. First of all, we're going to have a quick look at applying some textures to it. So I've got this, this wooden slatted texture. I've just got this off Google Images. Just type in wood texture, came up, brought it into Photoshop, and I'm then going to paste it into my scene. You see it's obviously far too big. I can scale it down. If you, if you can't find the controls to scale it down, just make sure you've got Show Transform Controls selected at the top, and then I can just scale it down. Next thing, you can see in my layers panel in the bottom right hand corner, I've got background layer, layer one, which is my building, and layer two, which is this cladding. What I'm going to do is just drop the opacity on layer two on the cladding so I can see my building behind it, so I can position it nicely. I might then just scale it up, and if I press the shift key, I can make it just a bit wider, so I'm going to stretch it slightly to go over there. And I might even compress it a little bit just so I get a few more panels in that area. Key things I'm going to look out for. This is really nice when you're designing a, a building or you're putting in cladding to make sure they fit nice and evenly. So I'm just going to squeeze this down so I get these full panels between that top point and that bottom point there. Once you're happy with your pos rough positioning, just hit the Enter key like so. Sorry, zoomed out a bit. And now I'm just all I've got to do is just go around and trim off all the bits that I don't want. So again, just using my polygonal lasso tool, setting around there, hit delete. Now I'm just gonna go nice and neatly on this side. I might even do the bottom at the same bottom and the other side at the same time. So I'm just deleting out anything that I don't want. 
hit delete. Okay, lastly, obviously don't want the panels going over this window area. So I'm just gonna go into there and chop those out as well. Hit delete. Okay, zoom out. Now I just put the opacity back up. <clears throat> For me, this kind of cladding, it doesn't fit with the lighting in, in the environment in which we're using. It feels a bit like a cutout. And so what I want to do is do some tonal adjustments to it to help it fit with the colours within it. You know, these are quite woody, grassy colours. I want my building to atone with its environment. So I'm just going to adjust them. Make sure I've got layer two selected. If you go to the top of your screen, I'm afraid this will be cropped out from where I'm recording. But if you go to image and adjustments and then levels to begin with, you should just be able to see that in the top image adjustments levels. What I might do is just put the midtones down a little bit. Can you see it's washing it out slightly. I'm also going to my output layers, output levels, just drop them down. So it's making these colors a bit more muted. I could bring the black up slightly so we've got a little bit more contrast in it. But I might do something like that, just with the tones in the image. Again, the colors don't quite match either. I feel that it's a little bit bright. So I'm just gonna go to image adjustments again, and this time go down to hue and saturation, which is just here. Command U is the, the shortcut. And I'm just gonna drop the saturation slightly. Can you see that small little adjustment? Those colors within that wood now are starting to relate to the environment. They feel like they've been lit by the same light. You've also got this adjustment to hue, so I might you know, make it slightly reddier or slightly greener. You know, so I might just drop it a tiny little adjustment, something like that. I might just bring the saturation down slightly more too and click OK. So I'm quite happy with that. I think that works quite nicely. Next, I'm just going to go into my next texture. So this is just a, a screenshot of some cladding. And I'm just going to select all of that, copy it, and bring it into my scene. Like so. This is far too big for, for me, so I'm just going to scale it right down. I'm going to place it just at the bottom here. And all I'm going to do is just press and hold my Option key or your Alt key on your keyboard. You've got to hit Enter first. And I'm just going to bring out a few of those. If you want to, what you can do so, so they don't look quite so much like they're all together is you might just adjust one or two of them, you know, by rotating them around so it's not so the different edges fit together. So something like that is quite good. You can see now I'm starting to generate quite a lot of layers. These are all one thing going together, so I'm just going to select layer three copy all the way down to layer three. So if you press hold the shift key, you can select them all together. I'm gonna right click and just go merge layers. So merge those layers I've got selected. So they're now all on one layer. It makes my life much easier I'm doing some adjustments. I want my cladding to run all the way down the back. So I'm just gonna lift it up to the highest part like so. And then next I'm going to the top of my screen. It says edit. Okay, and you're going to go down to transform and skew. So just edit, transform, skew. What this enables you to do is start pulling and adjusting the layers so we can get them feeling like they're flat with that surface there. Again, I'm going to just drop my opacity so that I can see where they are. And so the first ones I'm going to do, just going to really just stretch it out there, move it across slightly. And I'm going to do the same over here. So pull that across. Okay, don't worry if it's looking incredibly long at the moment. We can then squash that down in a second. So I'll now start squashing that. Move over this way. Squash that into place. And so something around there I'm fairly happy with. It's worth zooming in, getting nice and close, and just checking that you're happy. What, sometimes your image that you're bringing in isn't gonna fit really nicely to the area you're trying to apply it to. Um, so it is worth um, just having it extending over the top. I need it to extend a bit higher there anyway. 
Once you're happy, just hit the enter key and it's converted that, um, that all of those layers there to just one solid that's in that perspective view. Next, very simply, it's again, it's our polygonal lasso tool. We're just gonna go around and trim out all of the stuff that we don't need. So go trim out all of that. Delete key, we've got rid of it. And I'm finally just got to do the same on this little edge here. Now, I'm not going to add in any more textures. You could, you could spend quite a bit of time adding in more textures, including furniture on the inside. You might put a little wood burning stove in there, might put a picture up on the wall or a window in the back of it to show you know what's behind it that can be a quite a simple adjustment if you wanted to you know maybe add another window through so see the environment behind so i could just go to that layer one now make a box delete it so you can see a bit of the the area or the scene behind it i'll just leave it for now other things I might do, I can see I've got a couple of little errors in my drawing, you know, it's not perfectly joined together. Um, quite useful little tools you can use for this is the clone stamp tool on the left hand side. All you do is you press the option key in an area, so press the option key, you see my curse change if I click on that line there. Um, I can then paint and you can see it's copying from one area to another. So it's really useful to again just do this on your layer one. If you do have any little gaps, just try filling them in, like so, so something like that. Um, they're not the crispest, um, so what I might do is if I right click, I'm just going to put the hardness of my brush up, and that should make it a bit better. So again, option, oops, Worth just zooming in, doing it nice and close. The other thing is, I'm not too fond of this line here, so I might just try deleting it out. It is just an extra line from um, it's an extra line um, from the decking. I might try doing a content aware uh, adjustment. So if you just select that area, hit delete. Oh no, it's not wanting to happen. Uh, again, I might use my clone stamp tool. Just take that white painted in into there. Do the same over here. So you don't, this isn't a necessary step. It's just if you've got any little areas with your lines afterwards, just quite an easy way of just getting rid of them. All right, finally, I just want to just extend that line up there a little bit. Okay, not perfect but a lot better. You've always got to remember when you're working with Photoshop or Illustrator or anything like that, what is the audience going to see? When my image is that side, it's very easy to zoom in, especially when you've got nice high res stuff and make these tiny little adjustments. But when you zoom out, you're not going to notice all that much difference. So something like that, I'm fairly happy with. What I might do now is I'm just going to create some new layers. Um, I'm just going to have to move my screen up. Um, so sorry, it's cropping out the top and we create a new layer which is down the bottom here new layer button and um, all I'm going to do is then just add some tones into here and I'm just going to do a bit of painting on some of the, the layers so instead of bringing materials it's almost just like we're painting the interior so I want to keep my interior white and so I might keep my back wall white but it's worth just having even if something's white Often how shadows and things form, areas don't always feel fully white. So I'm just going to select an area here. Uh, go to my paintbrush tool, paint that in like so. Why I've done this on another layer is I've gone over the top of the lines. So by just selecting this layer and set it to multiply, you can see that those dark lines come through the surface of it. Again, I might feel that's actually just a little bit too dark, but it just adds a little sense of shading to it. 
I might now go in and just do something for the floor of the interior space. So think up a color for that. And again, I try and keep quite a limited color palette. The more colors you use, the more messy, the more kind of artificially collaged this will feel. So I might just go with something like that fairly soft gray there. You see now that feels like a slightly more three-dimensional interior space. The next thing I might do is just put some color or just might even go around this area here in black. And I'm going to do the same with the roof as well. You could try adding roofing tiles or roofing shingles, something like that if you want to, but I won't, I'll do it much quicker like this. Um, and again, when I'm using black, I'm trying not to using jet black. You know, black is often when it's lit, it cut, appears much more gray. That's still quite gray and light, but I'm fairly happy with that. Can I just select that area? So I'll try and speed up for all of you. Not sure I've done that very well, so I might just redo it. to my paintbrush again and paint that. What I might do now, just to darken it, go to my burn tool a little bit, just add a little bit of shading to it, just so it doesn't feel like such a block color. I'm just gonna add a bit of, a little bit of shading. It'll really help it feel less artificial. Again, you can do the same with the kind of dodge tool, you know, lighten up any little areas sometimes having little areas of imperfection help round it slightly. So not too happy with the latter ones, but some of those early ones, good. Just feels a little bit more natural. You might spend a bit more time doing it than me. Last thing I want to do is just add a bit of color to this area as well. Just so it's not so stark and white. Again, I'm just doing this all on one layer, but you might like to select, do each of your colors that you're painting in on different layers. That enables you to adjust them all together a bit later on. So I might just paint that in gray. So if I feel that all of those layers are a little bit light, I can just go to image adjustments, levels again, for example, just bring the darkness up and you see it's darkening all of them together. So something like that. Okay, so we go back to my layer two uh, or layer three, and I think that's feeling a little bit muted. So just going to increase the opacity on there. And again, what I might do is go to my levels. Bring the black up and then just go to hue saturation, command U and just drop the saturation slightly. Okay. So I'm now fairly happy with that. Um, you know, I think there's a lot more work I could do. I'd like to do a lot more with the interior space. Um, I'd be quite tempted to, you know, create um, another layer and, you know, maybe put, make this feel a bit more like a window. Um, and I might even put a little sort of glow out from it. So I paint over there. Again, I might just set that to, to multiply, reduce it down. If I go to my effects below it, I might go to outer glow, for example. You can see it's just added a bit of a glow around the outside. If I just turn the preview off, you can see the sort of before and after. And there's lots of little subtleties that you can do there. So you can adjust the spread and the size of it and how strong it is, the opacity. But adding a little glow from, from areas of lighting can feel quite nice. Um, <clears throat> what you may then do, what I tend to do at this stage is just go to image and duplicate. Because what I'd quite like to do, 
So I've just got a copy of this now. Um, is I might select all my layers together, right click and merge those layers together. And then you might do some more little plays with levels, just having a look at everything together and say, you know, is there a way that, you know, you can help make this feel a little bit more grounded? So I might do something a little bit like that. Lastly, all I'm going to do is because mine's sitting on some water, I thought it'd be quite nice to add a reflection into it. This will help ground it. If you're not doing something like that, what you might choose to do is use something like your burn tool. Go to your background layer, okay? And just adding a bit of shading underneath, okay? All right, and it's important that you can't see it on my screen, but where it says mid-tones, I might just go to highlights as well and just darken it slightly. Adding shadows around your object can really help ground them. Where something meets the ground, there's usually a little base shadow. So that helps it sit a little bit better, I think. I'm actually going to add a reflection, so I might just undo that. So to do this, all I'm going to do is take that layer, press my Option key, and drag it off. So I've just got a duplicate on top, a second layer. Um, and then I'm just going to, just with my shift key, press shift, and I'm just going to pull it down like this. What I suggest you do is don't do it flat and direct, directly down. I'm going to skew it just like we did before. Edit, transform, skew. And this also will help kind of make it feel a little bit more grounded. Right, so I might just do something a bit like that. Obviously, I'm going to reduce the opacity because it wouldn't appear like that on the water. So I'm just going to drop the opacity a bit. And I'm also going to try and blur it out because it feels a bit too sharp and a bit too crisp. So if I go to image, no, filter, sorry, blur. And I might just go to kind of Gaussian blur. You can see how it sort of blurs that. You can increase the amount of blur. So it could be something quite subtle on the water. So I might do something a little bit like that. And last thing I'm going to do is just go in with my eraser and just try and get out some of the detail that's in there. So we don't want it overlapping with any of that. All right, I might leave that there. You can, of course, once you're happy with it, right click, flatten your image, and you might put it all into black and white, for example, increase or adjust all of the levels. Um, but I'm quite happy with that. You know, I feel like that building sits in that environment fairly nicely. I think I could mute all of the colors and things within it a little bit better. So do really think about your environment. And of course, you can then just edit it like it's a normal photograph. You know, things I often do, uh, adding in, you know, um, adjusting the kind of sky, darkening that up a little bit helps to frame the image. So I might just go to sort of multiply, so just on the levels there. I might again do another one along the bottom. And then when you're happy, you can of course just save your image as normal. File, save as, JPEG, and bring that into your project. It's really nice to you know show how your designs fit within um, fit within a space where they're intended to go. So hopefully this tutorial will give you some really useful skills to do that. Um, I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Best of luck. Bye.